All right, let's begin. Good evening, everyone. I am Gary Witherspoon, Deputy Project Director for Public Outreach for the Purple Line. On behalf of Governor Westmore, Acting Transportation Secretary Paul Wiedefeld, and Maryland Transit Administration Administrator Holly Arnold, welcome to the 10th Community Advisory Meeting, Community Advisory Committee Meeting for the Long Branch area. Out of convenience to CAT members, we are continuing to host these meetings online for the time being. Please bear with us as with any virtual presentation, we cannot guarantee there will be no technical glitches. However, we will do our best to make the presentation run smoothly. Not to worry, this evening's presentation is being recorded. So in a few days, you'll be able to find this posted on our website, purplelinemd.com. For those who would like a live translation, the Teams format can translate this evening's comments into a number of languages, including Spanish, Arabic, Chinese, French, and Portuguese, and many more. Instructions for seeing live translations are being placed in the chat area of this meeting. Catherine Webb, the communications third party coordinator for Maryland Transit Solutions, will now relay that information in Spanish. Catherine. Buenas noches y bienvenidos. Para su comodidad, el Teams puede traducir esta reunión a varios idiomas, incluyendo español, árabe, chino, francés y portugués. Las instrucciones para ver las traducciones en vivo están en la sección del chat. Gary, back to you. Gracias, Catherine. Now here's our meeting overview. Tonight you'll have an introduction of team leaders. We'll give you a project update with the construction overview. We'll show you some progress photos and we'll address your questions with answers. Next slide, please. Tonight, you'll receive a project update from Matt Pollack and Ray Biggs II, the executive director and project director in the Office of Transit Development and Delivery, which oversees the project for the MDOT MTA. Also at tonight's meeting, are representatives of the builder, Maryland Transit Solutions, including construction managers, Deswasi Powell and Haisam Fati, and our old friend, Carla Julian, the MTS stakeholder manager. Matt and Ray will fill you in on what's happening on the state side of the project. They will then turn the presentation over to MTS, which will provi provide a construction update and plan forward. Finally, we'll give you reminders about things to look for during construction, and we'll tell you where to submit questions beyond those that will be addressed tonight. Again, you'll be able to find the presentation later on our website, purplelinemd.com, along with responses to questions we could either not answer or could not get to tonight. We ask that you stay muted and hold your questions until after the presentation. Then we will open the meeting to questions, first from CAT members and elected officials. Respectfully, we ask that you limit your remarks to less than two minutes. We invite so, you to raise your hand by clicking on the hand. Yeah, that, that is, that is, that is. I mean, yeah, um, and again, and I don't. We invite you to raise your hand by clicking on the hand image atop your screen and you'll be acknowledged. You can also submit questions via the chat option atop the page. Non-CAP members who are viewing the meeting and have questions can ask them using the chat function. Just tap on the icon, type in your question, and we will address your question if we have time. If your question is not addressed tonight, don't worry. All questions will be addressed later in a question and response posting on the website. Similar questions will be combined, so you may not see your question posted verbatim. Thank you for joining us. Here's Matt Pollack. Well, good evening, everybody. 
Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules to join us tonight. Our community advisory teams, which we, which we refer to as CATS, are an important part of the Purple Line project. This first bullet highlights the purpose of our CATS meetings, which are open to the public and provide an opportunity for the Purple Line team to communicate and interact directly with you or stakeholders. Stakeholders that are designated as CAT members are further encouraged to proactively share Purple Line information with their associated organization and the overall community. We also look to our CAT members to gather feedback from their stakeholders and engage directly with the Purple Line outreach team as questions or concerns arise. All right, let's move on to the organization slide. Here is the Purple Line project organizational structure that has been in place since April of last year. Our new design build contractor, Maryland Transit Solutions, is shown on the left side of the slide. The other parties shown here have remained in place on this public private partnership, including our concessionaire, Purple Line Transit Partners, or PLTP, who are represented tonight by Doran Basso, PLTP's chief executive. Uh, we also have our engineer of record, Atkins, our car builder, CAF, and our operator, Purple Line Transit Operators, which consists of alternate concepts, which is known as ACI and CAF. Okay, next slide, please. Now let's look at the revised project schedule. The new design, design build contract was executed in April of last year. During the spring, MTS engaged in its mobilization efforts, signing subcontracts, planning field activities, and performing due diligence inspections in the field. MTS construction activities ramped up over the summer. An active purple line construction can be seen across the entire alignment. With all the work plowing ahead, we look forward to light rail vehicles to start arriving at the new Glenridge Operations and Maintenance Facility. After that, the test track area, which is centered around the Glenridge Operations and Maintenance Facility, is scheduled for completion later in the summer of 2024, kicking off a period of intensive local testing, integrated testing, and initial operator training while construction continues elsewhere along the alignment. In winter of 2025, construction across the entire alignment will have progressed enough to allow for system-wide testing, full operational training, and the commissioning activities necessary to prove out a safe and ready light rail line. Passenger service is scheduled to start in the fall of 2026. Now, as the Washington Post recently and correctly reported, our concessionaire's technical advisor has identified project challenges that they believe represent a potential seven month slip in the overall schedule. Purple Line is a large complex project being constructed in a densely populated urban area. Most of these complex projects encounter difficult and sometimes unforeseen challenges on a regular basis. As these challenges arise, our primary duty is to seek out implementable paths forward that mitigate potential impacts. For our current set of challenges, MTA, PLTP, and MTS formed a schedule mitigation tiger team in October to work closely together and focus on work sequences, alternative plans, and other options for working around the challenges that are threatening to impact the project schedule. This time, there's not been a change to the contractual date for passenger service. Once we've agreed upon and implemented a revised path forward, we can then evaluate the revised schedule to determine what the resultant project dis resultant project display. We can then determine what the resultant project delay will be, if any. With that, I will now gladly turn over the microphone to Purple Line Project Director Ray Biggs. Some of you may have met Ray, met Ray but some of you have not. Um, I'm pleased to have Ray on the team. As Project Director, Ray is the state's representative responsible for the day-to-day -day design and construction activities on the Purple Line. Ray. Thank you, Matt, and thank you, Gary. 
So for this evening, we will focus on construction occurring between the Plymouth Tunnel and Piney Branch Road. This area includes Manchester Place, Long Branch, and Piney Branch Road stations. Each of our stations will feature unique art installations, benches, trash bins, and message boards, providing train arrival and departure information. Over the next few slides, we will show you renderings and designs for the three stations in this segment. You will see a locator map to the left to orient you to the area, identifying where the stations, where the station will be located, and on the right side, an engineering plan that highlights design features about the station. You will see details on the design features such as the lighting, shelters, and catenary pole locations. Next slide. Next slide. Thank you. So this rendering here provides a view from the western portal of the Plymouth Tunnel on East Wayne Avenue. And the Manchester Place Station can be accessed by walking into the western portal from East Wayne Avenue or from Plymouth Street, which will be featured on an upcoming slide. Next slide. This slide features the design details for the Manchester Place Western Portal, as well as the locator map, as mentioned before. Next slide. Here is a rendering of the Manchester Place Station from Plymouth Street. This is a view from on top of the Plymouth Tunnel. From here to, you can access, the station riders can access and take the elevator sort of stairs to access the station. Next slide. The graphics seen here feature design details for the Manchester Place Station from Plymouth Street. The parking lots featured around the station are for the residential properties adjacent to the station. There will be no dedicated purple line parking available at our stations. Next slide. Here is a generic representation of a side platform station, which is not unique to the landscape of the area for Long Branch. The train will arrive in between the two platforms, one for westbound and eastbound. Let's move to the next slide. The graph is seen here feature design details for Long Branch Station, as well as the locator map. From the station, riders will have direct access to diverse options for shops and restaurants and community amenities, such as the Long Branch Library and Community Center. Next slide. Here is another generic representation of a center platform. Note the previous rendering was a side um, platform station, but this is a center platform station, which is not unique to the landscape of this area for Long Branch. Um, the purple line will operate in the center lane um, with vehicular traffic on either side of the train. Let's go to the next slide. So here is the graphic seen here for um, the Piney Branch Road Station, as well as the locator map. This station is the westernmost station on University Boulevard. Let's move to the next slide. So, as you can see, work along the project alignment has progressed quite nicely um, over the last few months. Construction of five bridges, including the replacement of the Northwest Branch Bridge on University Boulevard, opening the reconfigured bus loop at the College Park UMD station, beginning construction of four stations, including Glen Ridge, Riverdale Park North UMD, Silver Spring Library, and Silver Spring. We also opened the sleeper underpass in Chevy Chase, and we have complete production of 26 of 28 light rail vehicles. Now, in the upcoming slides, we will highlight work in the Long Branch area. I will now pass the meeting to one of our construction managers on the project, the Swayze Powell. Good evening, everyone. Um, hope everyone's well. And this slide, a construction update will be for our Long Branch. Uh, this is the Manchester Place Station, Western Portal. The recent and ongoing work is that we have completed demolition of the temporary parking along Wayne Avenue remove the piles and install temporary support for excavation. Next slide.
for the upcoming work on the top side of Plymouth State uh, Manchester Station, we'll be constructing a base foundation of the portal, installing retaining walls, construct station roof, installing all station drainage systems, and start retaining walls surrounding the portal. In this picture, you can see this is the recent uh, picture of what is inside of the tunnel. We will be completing a track installation and we'll be installing the brackets inside the tunnel for the OCS, which are all called the overhead catenary systems. Next slide. Now for on Arla Street, we have two main things that we are trying to focus on right now is to install a storm drain and implement street parking restrictions. And uh, we will also begin to uh, build retaining walls and install the overhead catenary system foundations, resurface and install the curb, gutter, and sidewalk on inside the currently closed work zone on Arla Street, as you can see in the highlighted area. Next slide. Any bench road, uh, we have completed water, sewer, gas, and telecommunications relocations, installation of storm drain, uh, complete erosion and sediment control around Long Branch Stream, and install fish passage for prepare and prepare for stream restoration. Next slide. Upcoming work, we plan to begin construction of retaining walls in front of Fox Hall Apartments and Exxon Station. We will be removing and replacing an existing curb and sidewalk and begin roadway widening. Also, lastly, we will complete fish passage at Long Branch. Next slide. I want to pass this on to Carla. Thank you, DSYC. Um, thank you all for joining us tonight. I see a lot of familiar faces out there, so good to see you all. Um, as you know, we continue to work with community groups. Uh, thank you, Amy Barron and everybody else who helps us partner to do that. Um, and our team manages a stakeholder hotline that is 24-7. So if you have um, any concerns, complaints, questions, you guys all have the um, number for that. And if you don't, it will be displayed at the end of this presentation. Um, there is a monthly newsletter and our social media posts that continue to go out um, to let you know of different activities that are upcoming, as well as our notifications. And if you are not signed up for those, you can sign up for them or just go to the website and look at those uh, for upcoming lane closures and different activities that are upcoming. And um, we do obviously continue to host the community advisory team meetings. Next slide. Um, as always, safety. Apologies. Um, we do continue to have a lot of different uh, maintenance of traffic patterns out. And I know all of you familiar with um, our process. Thank you, Annie, for always letting us know um, when you see some things that are off. We appreciate that feedback greatly, so please keep doing that. Um, as we progress construction, we will have continued barrels, cones, and in some cases, we'll have to put plates on the road where we're doing excavation. So please keep alert as you traverse the work sites and uh, walk as a pedestrian. Pedestrian safety is um, first and foremost, and we continue to work with communities and elected officials to see how we can improve and keep that line of communication open where we can um, mitigate and put additional measures in place. Um, with that, I will hand it back over to Gary and I appreciate everyone's time. Thank you. Thank you, Carla. Welcome back. <laughs> That concludes our CAT presentation. Uh, thank you all for joining us. Before we open the meeting to live questions, we'll address some of those that came in before the meeting. Matt? All righty then. Let's see what we got here. 
Okay, um, we do have a number of questions. I'm not going to answer them all in a row. I think what, what we'll do is I'll answer a few of the questions that have come in ahead of time. Then we'll break to see um, what questions we have from, from uh, our listening audience, if you will. Um, and then we'll swap back and forth uh, just to make sure that we give everybody a chance. Okay, uh, first question that came in ahead of time is when is all construction work planned to be completed on Wayne Avenue and Arliss Street? Um, the construction work will be done in phases. However, construction will not be uh, completely done on Wayne until pretty much the, the end or the completion of the project. Construction on Arliss Street uh, should end sometime, uh, we're hoping in mid 2025. Another question we received, Please elaborate on the construction around Barron Street and the entrance to the Long, Bre Long Branch Recreation Center. Um, the Long Branch Recreation Center will remain open during construction. The new roadway will pass through the, the current staging area on P Piney Branch Road. The current entrance will be transformed into a, a curb line but there will always be a point of access to the recreation center. Uh, there are two drainage crossings on Barron Street that, that will need to be completed, but Barron Street will remain open for access at all times. In the final configuration, Barron Street will be signalized with pedestrian crossings at all, I'm sorry, pedestrian crosswalks at all four crossings. Um, and then as far as uh, uh, improvements, um, I, I can say that that the purple line is is rebuilding the entrance and constructing the sidewalk um, along Piney Branch Road. I, I can't speak to uh, any driveway or pedestrian access improvements, but I do know that uh, Montgomery County DOT is, is present today with with Christina Contreras, and I don't know whether perhaps she has any information whether there are pedestrian or driveway improvements planned um, in that area along Pawnee Branch uh, Road. And Christ what I can do, hi everybody, I'm Christina Contreras, I'm with Montgomery County Department of Transportation and working in partnership with MDOT and MTA on this. Uh, just letting you know that uh, as, as I'm getting up to speed on the project. Um, yes, the Montgomery County is going to be constructing the room. MTA will construct a part, then Montgomery County will construct the remainder of the access to Long Branch. And I saw there was a question that did pop up with regard to any renderings. I right now don't know of any renderings that I've seen at least thus far, but I will ask um, within the county to see if we can get something for you and to you. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Christina. Um, let's. I'll do one more question, um, and then we'll we'll go back uh, and see what we have um, from the attendees. The question says, "How will pedestrians safely access the trail and recreation center during construction?" Uh, pedestrian access to the community center will always be maintained, either with flaggers or with uh, posted detours. Um, and this is the, the same plan that's in place uh, when possible um, with the Long Branch Trail. However, it is possible that the, the trail will need to be closed uh, for a maximum of, of two days or so to complete a drainage crossing. Um, if that is the case, we will notify the community in advance when this work is scheduled uh, that would impact the trail. Um, Gary, uh, do you want to Yes. Either read or take some questions. Yes, we'll take uh, questions from CAP members and elected officials first. Um, I see a question, a uh, hand raised by Monica. Yes, hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, how are you? Um, I'm here also representing my husband, Kevin Wayne Hawkins. Um, he had to work this evening, but that's a name you may recognize. Um, he, we, We've been working very closely with Annie Tolkien and we formed the the neighbors interested in the Manchester <laughs> tunnel quite some time ago. It's good to see you all again. It's been a while and so we're most grateful. Um, uh, we do have a few priorities, but I'll just keep it to a minimum one and, and that's the street improvements. Bradford Road and Plymouth 
have been the traffic way for a number of your high weighted vehicles. So the streets kind of torn up and the, the speed bumps are gone. So I don't know what your timing may be to address those areas. Um, it's been a long haul, but we're grateful to see you guys back again. And uh, we wanna make sure you know that we're committed to continue to work with Annie and the small group that we formed around the tunnel uh, corridor access. Well, thank you. Um, it's good to see you. I, I think the last time um, I saw you, I guess I, I must have been out on Plymouth Street. Um, yeah, yeah. But uh, you all are definitely um, our eyes and ears, so we appreciate that. Um, mm -hmm. And so, you know, we're, we're going to take these comments back okay. um, and make sure we get someone out there to take a look at the road impacts, you know, mm -hmm. and, and um, you know, when we want to make sure that, that everything is drivable and um, as as surely as you expect it, that the pedestrians are, walkways are accessible as well. So we'll make sure to get someone out there. Um, and we'll also, you know, take this down as, a, as a, a written question and respond to it as part of the, our after meeting responses. I appreciate that. It's been, it's been a long haul, a little weary, but we're trying to stick with you and, and let you know you can count on us if you need more eyes and ears or foot, foot soldiers to help you along. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. I see we have a question from Joel Ryerson. This is Joel Ryerson. I'm calling my dear five million. I just yes. have Go ahead, Joel. some comments and questions. The comment is I know there won't be no bus on on Olive Street, but they have on Pine Branch, University Boulevard, and Flower Avenue. The Metro is on University Boulevard, right on University Boulevard, the right on Pine Branch, and all for Flower Avenue. Are they going to get my comment? I know they won't be no buses on Olive Street might be too small for the buses. But the question is on those other streets, are they gonna keep the bus stops where they are or they have to relocate them? Okay, I got it, Joel. Um, I don't know uh, whether Decisions have been made as far as rerouting buses along along that area, along um, whether it's it's Piney Branch or or Plymouth or any any of the other streets where where ride on or or other buses go. Um, certainly during the construction um, before the light rail's running, the, the the idea is to keep all existing bus stops in their current re, you know current locations unless they just have to be you know shifted temporarily. To, to adjust for the construction. Um, but I don't know the answer to that. It's a good question, Joel. We'll have to see um, if we have any timetables as far as uh, making sure that the, the bus connections aren't necessarily duplicative and, and reflect you, uh, what's needed. Well, thanks for trying to answer my question. May you have the question on the next meeting or maybe down, down, the, down the road. Thank you. Okay, thank All you, right. Joel. Next question from Annie Tolkien. Hey, everybody. Um, <laughs> hope everybody's doing well. Um, I just wanted to follow up on a couple things about Piney Branch Road and the rec center. I know that Christina mentioned she was going to try and get renderings. I think it would be helpful for people to see and start to wrap their heads around how the tracks will um, impact the Long Branch Trail, not just during construction, but you know, in 2026 when, when the line opens um, so that we can start to imagine or envision what that's gonna look like. And if there are some modifications that we wanna try and uh, work into the plans now, um, that would be helpful for us to all have that information to be able to make those suggestions or recommendations about connectivity. Um, when I did see a drawing of the driveway to the Long Branch Rec Center, it was just a driveway with no sidewalk access. 
um, and I know how people operate. I happen to be a human who walks around. Um, and so I anticipate that people will walk on the driveway and I, I have concerns about, about that. So I think if you could provide those renderings and just more detailed information about what the plan is for that space, that would be super helpful. I'll pause there because I have a couple other yeah. questions that I just wanted to pause. No, that's a good, it's a good time to pause. I think ab absolutely. We'll, we'll put together the renderings of, of all the drawings that, that we have on the purple line, um, as well as showing interfaces to, to like sidewalks and, and whatever is being put in place at the rec center. When you, when you talk about the, the trail to track interface, are you, are you, are you talking sort of like the, the trip where people are crossing the trail across Piney Branch and across the tracks? Is that, is that sort of the yes. scenario? Okay. There was yep. a temporary crossing there for mm -hmm. several years during the construction. Yep. Um, which has been removed, much to the chagrin of cyclists and pedestrians. Um, but, you know, it is, it's a state highway, six lanes, or it used to be, now it's narrowed down. Um, so it wasn't the safest crossing. Uh, but I think just for people to better understand what the plan is for that space and how people can commute from you know, Carroll Road all the way through, like how does this intersect with the bike master plan that the county has? Um, that would be helpful to understand. And no one okay. has been able to kind of put that together for us. Okay, yeah, we can put, we can get that stuff. I mean, I, I, I think it's basically probably like traffic striping plans will give, give sort of like the best idea of what's there and then that can then feed further questions if you have a Manny and then, you yeah. know, okay. Thanks, okay. thanks Matt. Sure. Yeah. Um, the the other question I had was about um, kind of contractor violations, right? So you you're all well aware that <laughs> I'm a see something, say something type person. Yeah. Um, so because I walk around a lot, like if there are blockages where sidewalks are supposed to be open or spaces where things are inaccessible, um, if those are documented can uh, individuals submit that documentation to this, the county or the state um, so that contractors might be uh, docked or penalized in some way? Uh, is there a penalization docking system within the contract? I don't think that's been clarified. Um, it, it's, it's a good question, Annie. The, um... The system that we have in place uh, encourages reaction um, to to any findings. So, in other words, yes, your your pictures are are extremely helpful um, because what what it does is it allows us to reach out to the contractor, and they have a they have a, a clock requirement for when they're supposed to to fix things. So, so the incentive program is based on on time to to address things that are are notif that they're notified of. Um, it's not necessarily a we see it and then we immediately there's a there's a penalty. It's it's more along the lines of let's get it corrected and and go forward and you know preferably in in a time frame that's acceptable to everybody. So it, it sounds like the contract assumes that there are going to be uh, violations and yeah. <laughs> I mean yeah. and so and so um, and then what sort of judgment is there around the the fix are we talking like is it like an hour two hours like what is a reasonable time frame in your estimation for how you're evaluating whether or not further penalties would be uh, given to the contractor yeah absolutely um i i we need to answer the question officially, but I, I'm pretty sure we work in in a two hour response time. That's what we try to work with, and the, that two hour response time, um, you know, gives them time to mobilize if it, if in case they weren't on site. You know, sometimes it's the type of thing where where you know a, a sandbag was shifted off a sign, the sign fell down, but no one happens to be in the area. So, you know, there is there is a response time that was given, but it's usually wrapped around a two hour two hour basis. Okay, thank you, Matt. Uh, Greg Sanders has a question. So, thank you all uh, for a great briefing. So I was glad to hear about the cooperative tiger teams. 
And of course, understandably, those are going to be frank and creative discussions. will be private and we'll even take time to brief officials from incoming administration about what you'd considered. But I was wondering, did the Tiger teams consider actions that might require the intervention of a General Assembly? For example, budget for additional staffing or changes to the law that might aid in addressing challenges? And if so, are there any plans to brief on those potential paths? Well, I mean, that's a that's a good a good question, Greg. I mean, absolutely, we're not we're not limiting our solutions to 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 anything that that involves, um, I guess, what I would call good ideas. I mean, yeah. if if there if there needs to be some sort of a a better if there's a better solution out there that that may involve um, the state considering uh, changes to the contract to to make it more effective or more efficient. I I don't think that we would toss that out immediately. I think you know we'll look at it. I I don't know that that would be our first choice, but but certainly, um, you know there there are ongoing things that we're di we're discovering in the field anyway that that involve um you know puts and takes as far as what it costs to do work and you know and there may be things like they're finding old work um that's that's not up to to par i mean that's not that's not their responsibility if it was old work um we owe them for that so there there are definitely contractual um wording in place that will allow us to to go outside the contract if we have to Right, and so just, you know, and to give a more detailed example, if say, you know, a finding was that there are times where some of the role in Maryland of coordinating the many, many stakeholders and utility relocations might benefit from you having a couple more people to help make all those calls or like, is that something that the Tiger teams could address or would it have to be, you know, done through more like, not address, but could raise up? Or would that have to come through another mechanism? No, that could come out through the Tiger team. That act, that that type of discussion um, comes out r regularly. Uh, we're we're always talking amongst ourselves, um, and it it may be that there is you know one particular stakeholder that that MTS is better at coordinating with, or or there may be one where they they feel that the state is in a better position to. And we're always trying to figure out how the best way is to work to work with our partners. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Gary, Ray. should we we go back to some written questions first? Sure. A, go ahead, Matt. Um, Ray, do you want to take a, a question or two before we swap back? Because I there may be sure. I don't know what we have as far as other questions. Yeah, I'll take over so to give you a little break here. Um, okay. So, what do feature traffic impacts look like in the Piney Branch Road area? I've seen a couple of questions come up in regards to traffic in the chat here. So. After we complete our current work on the south side of Piney Branch Road, utilizing long term lane closures until summer, uh, we will move work to the north side until the early to mid stages of next year. And then we will work in the middle section and traffic will be pushed to the sides and we will maintain two lanes in each direction. Um, I did see a question over in the chat that came from Liz in regards to how long is the right turn lane on University Boulevard? at Piney Branch going to be closed, um, recognizing that this intersection was brutal before construction began. So uh, we anticipate this long-term lane closure will be in place through mid-March, um, and it is in place for sewer re relocation is just beyond Seek Lane. Uh, jumping back to the previously submitted questions that we got, um, can you elaborate on outreach efforts that the project performs? So um, Carla talked a little bit about this when she was talking about all the various different things we have. And at the end, we'll make sure you have all the ways you can communicate with us to uh, reach out to us to get your questions answered. But we have heard from you and we want to address some of the concerns brought to our attention about our outreach efforts. Um, the Purple Line has dedicated outreach teams, as I mentioned, and as Carla mentioned, both on the business and the communication engagement side. Uh, both teams have bilingual staff to be able to meet and produce materials in both English and Spanish. I see we are putting up here the uh, ways you can contact us as if you, if you go to our website that has all of the information there. 
Um, but these teams um, work closely together and with our construction staff to communicate construction impacts in advance of implementation of construction in the different areas. So our team performs site visits, we distribute door hangers, uh, we post the information on our website and social media accounts, be sure to follow us, and we email the information to those subscribed to our alerts in both English and Spanish. Uh, we encourage everyone to sign up for the alerts, as I mentioned, through our website um, on purplelinemd.com. And we also regularly host our CAT meetings, hence what we're doing tonight, and participate in community events. Uh, we highlight businesses along the alignment in our newsletter and on our website and via social media. There have been a couple of videos that have been posted recently. And one of the things I just wanted to highlight here is the goal of the Purple Line is to fill a transit void for those traveling east and west um, with stations directly in the community. Uh, parking will not be available at most of the Purple Line stations. If you remember back when I was showing the renderings and showing those engineering drawings where there were parking spaces, um, those are actually for the residents. So just to reiterate that. Um, but um, you'll be able to hop on the train and connect to your next destination um, by using this new way of travel. Uh, we do understand that construction of this transit system will change the local environment, um, but our goal is to change it for the better and to have the least amount of negative impacts as possible. So that is why we have our teams out there, uh, our outreach team, our, com our construction managers, um, and everyone out there really looking now to make sure we minimize the impacts we have um, as we are constructing the project. So we continue this conversation in greater detail at, at future meetings, including discussing ways we could potentially supplement and promote our social media account, as well as those of the local communities. Um, we are always open to promoting our messaging um, and our team's comprehensive effort will continue. So um, I saw that we had it up, but we also put it in chat those different ways of reaching out and communicating with us so that we can make sure we're addressing and attending to your concerns. All right, Gary, I think that is all of the previously submitted questions. I know we have some that have popped up in the chat, so I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you, Ray. Ann Karakni, question about the third lane closest to the sidewalk on Piney Branch. Um, this has diagonal stripes. Motorists are confused whether this is a this lane is open, closed, or a turn lane. And it creates an increasingly dangerous intersection for motorists turning right from Piney Branch onto Barron Street. Can signage or additional cones be installed to indicate if this is in fact, this lane is in fact closed? Um, absolutely, We're, we'll go take a look at it. Um, typically any, any uh, street with the uh, diagonal stripes, I mean, any lane with diagonal stripes is, is not considered part of the roadway. Um, I'll, I'll let Joe Mogus jump in if he wants, but um, we'll also go take a look at it and, and make sure we understand exactly what you're looking at as well. Joe, I don't know if you wanted to add to that. Um, hi, uh, Joe Mogus, M.SHA District 3 traffic. Um, Matt, everything you said was perfectly accurate. Um, we called it hatching. Um, we installed, well, in partnership with MTA Purple Line, we installed the hatching on the closed shoulder to further restrict motors from abusing that lane. If there is any confusion, I'll leave it to MTA to consider supplementing that with drums or traffic control devices of their choice. Um, but yeah, we can work with MTA on the back end and see what's appropriate there. Thanks, Matt. Yeah. Uh, someone asked about a pothole. I'm responding in the in the chat, but please send us a photo so we can get an exact and an exact location to uh, outreach at purplelinemd.com. Outreach at purplelinemd.com. We want to get it in our file so we know where it is, so we can attack it as quickly as possible. Are there other questions? Gary, I noticed we have um, Council Member uh, Stewart's office is on the line. Uh, Mr. Ellis, I don't know if he's still on. He was on before. I don't know if he had any questions. Yeah. Thanks very much for your presentation tonight. Um, I 
to add on to Ms. Tolkien's question, I just wanted to ask for the response time to um, pedestrian impediments. Um, is that a seven day a week response time or a five day a week response time just for the community's understanding? Um, we'll have to take a look at the contract, but um, you know, um, I, and I don't know whether Carla maybe knows the answer to this while I'm while I'm jumping around here. But um, certainly, we we reach out to our contractors 24/7 when anything is reported to us. I just don't know whether um, the the notification period changes if we're talking um, in the middle of the night. I I, I don't recall seeing that. Um, and I don't know um, whether there's anybody else on the line that that knows differently. Um, let yeah, me see. That might be able to jump in to help a little yeah. bit here. Um, I believe it's a seven day. Um, what Paul was asking about it said five or seven. It's a seven day and a two hour requirement and it's 24 seven too. Okay. And right, actually, well, while we're jumping, if if um, Kevin Oberheim is on the line. I don't know. He's he's usually the one when when I'm when I'm throwing out a hail mary that he's the one who catches it. I don't know if Kevin, if you know that off the top of your head. Yeah, I think what, what Ray said is 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 spot on. It's it's twenty four seven. It's uh, from the moment we identify that there's been an issue and we notify the contractor MTS. Uh, they've got two hours to uh, make it correct, and that that goes for. You know, general ADA compliance, block sidewalks, block driveways, things like that. It it covers uh, what we call access and mobility, um, which is you know maintaining pedestrian access, maintaining bicycle and and driveway access. You know, there's there's separate requirements for vehicle access that are not incentivized. They have actual they have penalties as opposed to an incentive. Thanks, Kevin. OK, Ray, you mentioned trash cans at stations. Uh, what about recycling? It's to, I'm trying to follow the question. Will recycling bins be there? Yeah. Um, yes, recycling bins uh, will be there. Um, so that, that, was, that was just a generic answer of trash cans, but recycling bins will be there. Um, one question that I do see in the chat, Gary, is um, is the contract available online? Um, and yes, it is. Um, if you navigate there, you'll be able to download the full contract P3 agreement um, that is in place. OK, uh, we, got a, we sent out a notification that all the street construction is postponed. Uh, any idea when it will start? Um, I would probably pass that one to DeSuasey, um, if he is still on. I don't know if he knows yeah, the answer to that. Yeah, okay. I can answer this. Um, yeah. so most recently we are going through, um, condo removal and, um, uh, spot on with uh, the removal of the lights. So the issue with that is we are waiting for Pepco to remove these for us. So that's why one reason why it got postponed. Um, we are projecting another month or so mainly because they are have their own work orders. So they are going to try to help us as best as we can, fast as we can. But I can say a month, month and a half the most. Thank you. OK, uh, Eric B says this might be out of scope for this discussion, but when construction is finished, does anyone know if there are going to be zoning restrictions changes near the station? Um, you're probably right, Eric. I'm I'm not sure that that there's anybody on this call who can answer that, since since typically zoning is is the purview of the um, the county. I think the county council, um, unless there are specific cities that are that have jurisdiction over parts of the alignment. Um, Christina, I see you pop up. I don't know if that was because you wanted to answer. <laughs> No, not necessarily, but um, yeah. with the zoning, it would be through the county council administered yeah. through uh, 
Montgomery County Park and Planning, Maryland National Capital Park and Planning, and then also Department of Permitting Services. So if there were any changes that did occur to any zoning laws between uh, uh, Maryland National Capital Park and Planning and DPS, those would be the two enti Montgomery County entities that would help move it forward. Um, but it still would have to go through council. So. Okay, thank, thank you, you, Christina. I yeah. see that Lauren Garrett, our outreach manager, has placed a link to the contract in the chat section. So you can you can find that there. Thank you, Lauren. Annie asks, how many contractor violations are tolerated? Well, the correct answer is, Annie, is we, we don't tolerate follow violations um, in general. Um, the, uh, the, I believe, well, again, we'll need to check on this. Um, as Kevin said, there are certain violations that, that create penalties. There are other violations that um, result in loss of incentive payments that might otherwise be um, allocated. Um, I think usually the incentive payments uh, are, are based on a on a decreasing grade based on uh, a performance within a month. So um, a single event uh, corrected within a timely fashion does not necessarily impact. Um, but you know multiple multiple low impact events will, as would one single high impact event. And Matt, I, I can add in it. Like you said, it's yeah. on a it is on a sliding scale and it covers the entire alignment. So it's there is a um, a grade each quarter. Um, this is all in the contract. So if you if you want to look it up on what Lauren posted earlier, it's it, this is all posted publicly. Uh, but it, it's a sliding scale with a quarterly grade, and there there are incentive payments by quarter, and then there is an overall grade at the end of the project for a larger available incentive payment for maintaining a high grade. Um, so each quarter is graded on a sliding scale. Um, just as an example, five failures to correct within two hours in, in a month is um, is an A, and it goes down from there. Um, but any any individual Failure to correct within two hours is an automatic F for the quarter. Thank you, Kevin. I see we have a hand raised by Elaine Emling. Yes, can you hear me? Yep. Yes. Uh, perhaps you covered this right at the beginning. I signed in a few minutes late. Uh, nobody said anything about the bridge over Sligo Creek. Uh, are you taking that down, re-changing it? What's going to happen? That I will. I will pass it to Deswaysi, but 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 basically that that bridge over the Sligo ha Creek has to be removed and rebuilt um, in a widened fashion. Um, I don't know if Deswaysi, if you have uh, additional details. Yeah, as right now, uh, the new MOT changes phase 1A. Uh, this will be going on for a good period of time, but we'll be doing phase one, which is the north side of demoing of the bridge, and then uh, it's phase two will be doing the south side of the bridge. Uh, I'm sorry, did you did you give any timing for that any months? Like, is this going to happen after the summer? Or I see that the north side is blocked off now and all of the two lanes of traffic are on the south side. <laughs> I, I, I'm really perplexed by this because when I moved into the neighborhood around 14 years ago this summer, I was told that there was a lot of hoo-ha over building that bridge and replacing what had been there before. And this had just happened very recently. So now it's being replaced again. That seems to be what's happening. I just want to be I just want to be clear on that so that when I talk about it, I accurate. Yeah, uh, I'm not aware of the circumstances um, for the for the original replacement that that you're saying was just over a decade ago. Um, I, I don't know what the reasoning for that is, okay. um, but I'll certainly yeah. I'll ask the neighbors. They they there's some old timers around here. OK, thanks a lot. 
Yeah, no problem. OK, Greg Sanders asks, are there any process improvements that you can share coming out of the Tiger teams that are already starting to yield benefits? Um, well, I, I guess uh, benefits is is maybe not the word, Greg. I think I think we're finding uh, ways that are are possibly more efficient um, to to slow down our impacts, if you will. Um, basically, I think what we're seeing is um, it's not only in the Long Branch area and, and downtown Silver Spring. Um, but also on University Boulevard and, and all the way over in Riverdale, we're, we're implementing some different um, MOT to, to try and um, get more work done be, being done in parallel. I mean, that's really the, the process improvement that, that we've gotten on, on board so far. Um, you know, and, and you know, we're, we're all just hoping that that it uh, takes care of the impacts that we're already seeing. Other questions? There are questions in the chat, Gary. New messages. Can we get a more detailed schedule about the progress in construction when various segments will be completed? Ergo, utility relocation at Wayne and Manchester that has been going on for about four years. Um, certainly, whenever whenever there are, are particular um, construction activities that you're interested in, we we can um, go take a look at the schedule. Um, you understand that that when we give you a schedule time, it's it's literally when we schedule the work to be complete. It's not um, it's not uh, an absolute, as you all surely recognize by now. Um, it's only the best planning effort that we have, um, but we're happy to give you the best planning effort that we have. So um, absolutely, reach out to our to our Purple Line outreach, outreach at purplelinemd.com, and uh, we can give that that type of insight. I'm not sure if this has been addressed, but Annie asks, how is enforcement of penalties dealt with when there's no contractor at a site, or when it's MTA work versus MTS work? Does this have any impact? Yes, so it's really three. It's it's three parts. Um, no one's there. MTA work or MTS work. Uh, if it is active MTA work, um, then MTA is responsible for for getting it corrected within the within the time frame. If it's uh, MTS work, um, then by extension PLTP and and the MTS team. Are, are responsible for it. If it if it has to do with work that had been completed in the past, I, I I'm trying to think of what the what the situation would be where it's where no one's there. I'm I'm guessing it's it's a type of thing where there is no work site there, but you see something, um, and and you know you, you get a hold of us. Uh, we're going to investigate it, and to the extent that that we can attribute it to our work, uh, we're going to make sure it gets corrected by the right party. Um, if it's if it's not a purple line issue, then we're gonna we're gonna contact on behalf of the whoever sent us the information. We're gonna contact um, other parties till we figure out uh, who's who's responsible so that we can get it corrected. Okay, this question came in earlier. I'm not sure if we touched on it. Um, will the crossing of Piney Branch to the station be protected, or will it be crossing? Piney Branch traffic. I believe that the V well, the best way to do it is for us to to look it up and 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 give you a direct answer. Most likely, um, I believe that that intersection of Piney Branch 
um, and Arliss is is already signalized, so it's going to be adapted to to include the the light rail vehicle in the signal phases. But but um, absolutely, let us look into it and make sure we give you the correct answer. When will work resume on the top part of the Manchester station, Plymouth Street? I am going to pass it to my trusty Mr. Powell. If he knows an answer, if not, we'll have to get get back to you by researching it and, and responding. Yeah, at this moment, I don't have a time when we start that. We're doing on the, 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 the bottom version first uh, with the Western portal. That's where we're trying to get out of this, the main foundation. So when we start getting more work coming into there, then we start going to the top. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. OK, Kara, you have a question? Yes, hi. I'm, I did put it in the chat, but I just wondered if there might be more specificity. I had asked by when and how might we expect to see renderings of the pedestrian and bike paths to and from the Long Branch stations? I'm the uh, Ward 5 uh, City Council member from Tacoma Park, so I'm particularly interested in whether, for example, there's the Long Branch sector plan. I'm not clear on what other plans already exist, but that one is already 10 years old. Um, I'm just wondering if you might be a little more specific on what plans they're drawing upon and or where we could currently go. I, I'm, I'm a little surprised that, that there's not a more immediate answer to we're relying on X, Y, and Z plans or or something, or they don't exist yet. I, I don't know. They're being redone. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the the purple line, our, our purview um, is, is really is going to be along the streets that we're doing work um, with very limited um, uh, extension beyond either a station, uh, you know, the, the, the specific station area itself or the street and its sidewalk. Um, once, once we leave that area, it, it then becomes the purview of, of whoever is the local jurisdiction at that point. Um, Christina, I, I will gladly see if you have anything to add to it. Uh, I might have a little bit to add. Kara, yeah. um, uh, thanks for the question. And uh, with it, uh, with Montgomery County has done what we call a bicycle and pedestrian area study, um, a BIPA study as you may hear of that term around. Um, and with that, I know that there are uh, bike lanes that are planned in various areas through there. I can get back to you. I know they're in the planned version right now, so the designs are being developed. But um, I can get back to you and let you know exactly the locations of the paths um, to, to help give you an idea of in the future what at least Montgomery County is moving forward with in that area, in the Long Branch area. Can I just clarify, is that to supersede any previous plans that we may have seen renderings of, such as the 10-year-old Long Branch sector plan? Do, and, and if you don't know, I understand, but do you know that? I don't, I'll be honest. Okay. But I will check, and maybe that's what it is, is uh, that 10-year plan was, was uh, looked at, and especially with the purple line coming in now, um, it all integrated together to see what would work best for everybody. So can I, uh, let me, I, I can get back to you, Kara, if you give me uh, your contact information. Sure thing, thank you. Can I jump in just for a moment? I hate to interrupt any of this. Um, from my understanding and my engagement with Dan Sheridan from MCDOT is the BIPA along Maryland 320 Piney Branch Road um, spans from the easternmost limit at Maryland 650 New Hampshire Avenue westerly up to and beyond Flower Avenue. And specifically the Purple Line alignment overlaps Maryland 320 Piney Branch from Arliss Street to 193. So there is some overlap. Now, does that impact Purple Line in that Purple Line would have to redesign their ultimate design? No. Um, primarily the BIPA that the county is proposing is along the south side of Maryland 320. So if anything, primarily would be widening of the sidewalk, shared use path, et cetera. But, uh, you know, ultimately I'll defer to Chrissy and her contacts within the county. 
Right, and I'll also look because I, I believe there's also some plans in the making along Flower Avenue, likewise, so. And to be clear, uh, Flower Avenue south of 320 is, was transferred to the State of Tacoma Park, so it's no longer Maryland 77, it's, it's now City Roadway, um, so SHJ wouldn't really have a role in that. But I hope that you'll coordinate with the City of Tacoma Park. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay. Other questions? Well, hearing none, that concludes our CAP presentation for this evening. Again, you can sign up for construction notices at purplelinemd.com. And for project questions and comments, you can contact the M.MTA Public Outreach Department by email at outreach at purplelinemd.com. That's outreach at purplelinemd.com. You can also call us at 443-451-3706 for English and 443-451-3705 for Spanish. Please follow us on social media. We have an outstanding social media presentation on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, if I say so myself. Again, Matt, uh, thank you for joining us tonight. Matt, any fi final comments? Uh, we appreciate y'all's interest, so, so thank you. Um, don't think this is your only chance to ask questions. Uh, you know, certainly if you ask questions um, in the next couple of days, we'll wrap them up into this presentation. But, you know, year round, um, as the questions come, please reach out to us. Um, it's better that that you hear it from us than, than you guess. So feel free. Good night, everybody. Good night. Take care, Joel. You too.